Welcome to Wayne's Weird World. One o'clock somewhere, and it is here. Lovely bit of sandstone. Well, I think it's sandstone. That I'm going to mount this large dendrobium speciosum on because they naturally are lithophytes. They grow on rocks. And normally, say up in the New South Wales coast, around the Sydney coastal region, sandstone outcrops where there's a little bit of seepage, these things thrive. They will survive 40, 42 degree Celsius hot summer full on sun, and then the winter down to frost. Not a killing frost that's going to last for weeks and weeks, but Overnight, it gets cold. Beach rocks, they had all kinds of shell formations on them. And what I've done, this is vinegar. Just common old household white vinegar. That I then go and take this piece of bamboo, scrape off a fair bit of the, uh, the shell. These are barnacles. Let's get that vinegar out of the way, so I can plunk it down there. And I give it a bit of a scrape. The vinegar has softened, softened up the shell quite a bit. It will dissolve the, uh, the shells completely, given time. But if you're a little bit of a hurry, just give them a bit of a scrape. Give them a bit of a hose. Then eventually you'll be able to clean them up and finish them off with a toothbrush. You can get right in there. Sometimes you'll have to put them back in the vinegar two or three times. This has been in there uh, overnight. So those shells are really quite soft now. And I always prefer to use something that's fairly soft. I don't want to uh, scar the rock up too much. There's a bunch of it. Eee. Don't let the splash too much. Whee. I'll put it back in the in the vinegar, the acid bath. And that's what I do to clean them up. Then, I've got this nice large saucer. People buy the large flower pots and they oftentimes decide they're not going to have the saucer. So I get them on special, very, very cheap. A fraction of their, uh, of their full price. And ideally, the rock is going to sit in that quite nicely. Just use your thumb and forefinger. I usually pick out all the little bits of dirt and bark that might happen to be in there. That's good enough. Now, let's see how it fits. Australia. Darwin's up here. There's a Gulf of Carpentaria, the great Australian bite. We missed out on Tasmania again. Oh well. Yep, I think that's going to be a good fit. 
All right, what kind of mess we have here? Sphagnum moss, my fishing line. I'm just going to lift it up. See, it's not very deep. Because I had to uh, clean it up a lot of root system. And it was a mess. I had grass growing through it and everything else under the sun. Thankfully, not any uh, kaikuyu. That would have been that would have been pretty terrible. And then to try and see how it's going to Ooh, that feels good. Maybe maybe just a little bit of a rotation. Let's have a try it that way. No. This this feels better. Yep. I think we're going to have a nice one here. I, I put a few small Dendrobium kingianums on driftwood and another small one on, the, on a stone. Then there's a, a Cattleya, Lelia Cattleya cross hybrid that is mounted sort of half on driftwood, half on a rock. But this is going to be my my attempt at duplicating the uh, the growing conditions for this native Australian orchid. Dendrobium speciosum. Well, it's going to take me a while to, to get all this settled in. I'll get my camera person, Belinda, to help hold it. I'll probably put a loop around some little outcrop like this and then start wrapping the fishing line back and forth. Probably going to take a year or two before I'm brave enough to remove the fish line. I made the mistake of being a little bit too eager. Yeah, little pockets like that. I don't have my lazy Susan under this one. It's heavy. Yeah, gonna leave it. Um, I was a little bit too eager with the big Galalia anceps that was on uh, a hanging mount, and uh, I cut the fish line away. Very, very happy with it. A couple months later, came out in the greenhouse, and here it was hanging by less than half of its root system. It just got too top-heavy. So that had to be taken down, re-secured, more fish line, and I'm not going to be quite so hasty next time. And uh, there we go, just tuck it into these little nooks and crannies. This is Tasmanian sphagnum moss. Comes from a, a oh ho ho ho! Belinda, look at this down here. I've got a new growth coming out. This was a terribly, terribly neglected, neglected old orchid, and now I've got a new growth. I want to be very careful with that. That is good. I'm happy with that. Now, if everything else goes well, and it settles in on this, I will be ecstatic. Absolutely. Oh, there's a little pocket. I can feel it. I treat a lot of the work that I do like a bonsai. And... Uh, there's more than one way to look at it. You'll end up having a favorite. A favorite advantage of viewing position. But um, you really should, I hate that word, should, look at it from all directions. That's why I don't like uh, mounts on the wall so much. 
although I do have a lot of them, you end up looking at it always from the same point of view. Front, and maybe a little bit of a three-quarter side view. But one like this, especially if you have a big, well-built Lazy Susan underneath it, turn it around, and you can enjoy it from all aspects. Well, I had lots of scale on this one, overgrown, grass growing up through it. It was a mess. I'm a lot happier now. That's it. Wayne's Weird World, Dendrobium speciosum. See you next time.